What's up, Fantrax Nation? Eric Cross here with another Top 25 Prospect Rankings here on the Fantrax YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe below. You know, we'll be putting on a lot more video work on this channel over the next few months and in, into the 2020 season, which is right around the corner. And we got our 2020 Fantasy Baseball Draft Kit out. A lot of goodies in there, so make sure you take a look at that. From prospects, the dynasty, the strategy, the rankings, positional primers. We got a great crew here at Fantrax, so a lot of good stuff there already and moving forward. So keep on the lookout for that throughout the preseason for more. And today we're talking about the Seattle Mariners system. This is one of the, uh, it's one of my favorite systems in the American League to write up. I just finished with the American League. This was the last one I wrote about. Uh, this was one of my favorites to write about. Uh, used to be kind of a bottom 10 system, but over the last few years, they've really hit on all facets. They get, did one of the draft internationally, uh, made a couple of trades. <laughs> Sorry, Mets fans. Um, <laughs> all my Mets fans out there hate when I bring up the first guy we're gonna be talking about here, but gotta do it. Um, let me start with my top 10 here from this system, uh, starting with outfielder Jared Kalenic, former New York Met prospect. And you got Julio Rodriguez at two. Three through five is Noel Lee Marte, Logan Gilbert, and Evan White, first baseman. And then six through 10, we got Jake Fraley, George Kirby, Kyle Lewis, Justin Dunn, and Cal Raleigh, catcher. And for all you wondering, Justice Sheffield's number 11, former uh, top prospect from the Yankee system. And this is, like I said, a really good system. Clinic tops this great system. Um, you guys know I love. Jared Kalenic. I've been super high on him since the 2018 draft, um, and I had him, I think, second or third overall out of, in my 2018 first-year player draft rankings, and now he's even the top guy I take from that draft, no question about it. Luciano is kind of near him, Gorman's fallen off, but Kalenic is just the all-round offensive juggernaut, um, plus contact skills, plus speed, should be a 300 hitter or above with his contact skills. He can use the whole field. The bat speed is easily plus. Quick hands, good feel for the barrel, good strike zone awareness. Um, just hits the ball hard to all fields with great contact skills. And like I said, speed is plus as well. Um, power is better than people give him credit for, I think. I think there's above average to plus raw power there, and it's kind of been trending upwards you know, since the draft. Um, so he's one where it wouldn't surprise me if he pushes 30-30, it really wouldn't. Uh, I think he'll settle in probably in like the mid-20s for home runs, around 30 or so steals, average around 300. Uh, just a well-rounded offensive uh, nice offensive star to put in the, that Seattle outfield very soon along with Julio Rodriguez, um, who is not too far behind him. Both these guys should be up probably by end of 2021. Uh, maybe even Kalenic up by end of 2020, he's already in double A. So. Not too far off there. Both very advanced bats. Saw Julio Rodriguez out in the Fall League, Arizona Fall League, and he's just a beast. Very strong and athletic outfielder. Double plus raw power. That hasn't quite translated into the home run totals yet, but trust me, they're coming. Um, like I said, pl double plus raw power. Contact still with a plus two. He's a very good hitter, and he used the entire field. Bat speed is insane. Um, just hits the ball hard to all fields. Should hit for a high average, plenty of power. Uh, and he's got some, a little bit of speed too. He's not a speed star like Kalenic, but like I said, super athletic, at least average above average foot speed. So I wouldn't be surprised if adds 10 to 15 steals into the average and power as well. Both these guys are top five um, in, currently in my rankings. And another guy who I'm very high on here at number three, who I projected to jump into my top 10 in 2021, is Noeli Marte, shortstop. Defensive skills aren't great with him, so he might move off of the position at some point. Who knows? It's still very early, uh, still only 18 years old, but the offensive skills are there. He's a raw um, shortstop, but potential for 30-30. Elite speed, plus raw power that's still he's still growing into. So I think he's still got some untapped power there. Contact skills are pretty solid. Uh, I think he can be at least a 50 hit, maybe 55 hit prospect. Uh, by the time he's all said and done, um, just make sure he keeps his strikeouts in check, which he's done so far. Play approach is pretty solid for someone his age. Uh, just make sure that that stays. Contact skills remains um, strong. I think he'd be like a 280 type hitter and push 30-30. Those don't just grow on trees. 
Um, so he's uh, he's already pushing my top 25 overall. So he's one to definitely grab a lot of Donnie Donnie stock in now before his price tag gets super super uh, inflated, which it's about to. It's already on the way up there. Uh, and then at four, we have the top pitcher in this system, Logan Gilbert. Uh, out of a little known Stetson University, where I, I didn't even know where this was when I first heard of it, um, but this is the same school that Jacob deGrom and Corey Kluber came from. So, you know, whether it doesn't have the huge name, you know, like a Vanderbilt or something like that, it still has its history of producing top notch pitching prospects. And, you know, those two have been two of the top probably 10 pitchers over the last five to six years in, in baseball. So, uh, Gilbert doesn't quite have ace upside. But I think he's right in that next tier down where he can be a really solid number two. Um, workhorse frame, you know, high strikeout potential, has two plus pitches in his fastball and his curveball. Uh, and slider and changeup as well, both average to above average pitches. So um, at, so even if we put those as average, at least four major league average pitches with two of them being plus. Good solid command and control over his entire arsenal. Doesn't walk too many guys. Pounds the strike zone and hit a spot with all four pitches. It's a great feel for all four. Um, so this is a very, uh, very good pitcher. High upside, high floor to invest heavily in. Uh, speaking of investing heavily in, Evan White needs to be someone you invest in. You know, he's been one of the most underrated prospects you know, in baseball for the last few years. Um, this year, playing in Double A Arkansas, uh, it's a very pitcher friendly park. Um, so the power hasn't quite come out, you know, as much as you know he has in the tank. So, plus, I'd say above average to plus raw power. I think he's got potential for 25 home runs. Contact skill is right around above 55, 60 grade as well. So, hit 280 to 300, 25 to 30 home runs. Athletic first baseman as well. Uh, could probably chip in you know, right around 10, 15 steals for the first several years of his career. Uh, I threw a poor man's Goldschmidt comp on Evan White. Uh, due to that kind of offensive skill set that he possesses. And then I reached out to a buddy of, of, of mine, prospect writer Alex Jensen, uh, who's been very high on Evan White, probably the highest around. Drafted him 17th overall, I believe it was, in our prospect mock 480 we did last month. Uh, so I went out, reached out to him to get a blurb as to why he's so high on Evan White, you know, kind of a lot higher than most. And he, without knowing that I put a Goldschmidt, poor man's Goldschmidt comp on Evan White, also brought up the name Paul Goldschmidt when talking about him. So it's a lot to get excited about here. I don't think either one of us are saying he's going to be Paul Goldschmidt, but kind of the high average, high power, a little bit of speed, kind of that first baseman profile. And he's a great defensive first baseman too. So um, even when he's slumping, this is the guy he's going to stay in the lineup is due to his defense. And with them signing him to a contract extension already, kind of buying out his arbitration years, which I love, by the way. I love when teams do this. Um, he should be opening the starter at first base and could be one of the top rookies um, in the 2020 season. So make sure you take a flyer on him in the later rounds of your draft, just for, just for the heck of it. The upside's there. So um, a couple others to keep an eye on in this system here. George Kirby, um, first round pick by the Mariners this past June. Um, I, again, another guy that doesn't get as much love as he should. But he's got two plus pitches out of a four pitch arsenal, kind of like Logan Gilbert, where he's got four major league average pitches or better, two of them being plus. They, both the command and the control are phenomenal. Uh, he didn't walk a guy in the minor leagues; it was like twenty something innings. But and that, but that does, that's not new for him. He's been super low walk rate throughout, you know, collegiate career, minor leagues, everything. Um, doesn't walk, like I said, doesn't get himself in trouble, hits his spots. So high, high floor for him. And probably the upside of, I'd say, a, you know, back end number two. He doesn't quite have the upside of, of a Logan Gilbert, but definitely a name to invest heavily in, in dynasty leagues. And then a couple sleepers in this system. Uh, Jonathan Classe, outfielder, speedy outfielder, undersized, like 5'8", 150 in that range, but plus contact skills, plus speed, a little bit of pop. So um, especially if the power develops a little bit more, gets into the teens, you know, home run wise, the average and the speed are going to make him you know, someone to definitely keep an eye on. Definitely, he's going to shoot up rankings here in the next year or two as he you know, kind of gets into the single A ball. Uh, same thing goes for George Feliz. He's a recent J2 signing for the Mariners. Um, hasn't played a game yet in the minor leagues, but has a lot of Victor Robles comps. This is a kind of all round uh, above average profile with good speed, some pop, good hit tool. 
uh, another sleeper to definitely keep, keep an eye on. So a lot of fantasy goodness in this system. You got good pitchers, sleepers, elite bats. Uh, you can really strike it big in the system in Dynasty Leagues if you target some of these guys. Uh, so definitely go out and do that. I, I'm investing heavily in a lot of these guys in Dynasty Leagues myself. Um, so definitely I would recommend doing the same. That's going to do it for the Seattle Mariners Top 25. Like I said, one of my favorite ones to write up. Uh, make sure you follow this channel, Fantrax YouTube channel, for a lot more prospect videos here going forward. Uh, check out the draft kit. Like I said, a lot of goodness in there as well. Uh, and, and don't forget, if you move your league over to Fantrax today, brand, brand new leagues moving over to Fantrax, uh, you get a free year of premium features. That's great. All you got to do for that is reach out and tag myself at EricCross04 at Fantrax on, on uh, Twitter with the hashtag freemium. So like premium, but put free instead of free, you get it.